It's been a tough week in Carrickstown, and one which is certainly worth a second look. for a visit? Yeah. This is Mike. A oh, pleasure. John Mark. Hi. And this must be Rachel. Paul told me. I oh, was sort of business partners. So I'm privy to all the Carrickstown news. <laughs> nice meeting you. Right. Creep. Friend of yours. Did you hear him getting that ticket? What ticket? About Paul telling him all the news. If Paul's up his big mouth to him as well, I'll... He was only explaining how he knew her name. Yeah. Maybe this is a mistake. What? Come in here. Helen, we've been through this. I just can't face Nicola. Look, Hannah told you she's moved away to her mother's. But what if Mara tells him he's not to see me? He said he was Paul's partner, not Nicola's. I just can't face her, Mike. You won't have to. Trust me. Are you sure I look all right? You look grand. Anyway, you're only meeting a slip of a young one. Not the Queen of Sheba. Ah, yeah, but that's not the point. The poor girl will probably be nervous coming to a big city. I want to create kind of a welcoming impression for her. And mm, what kind of an impression is she going to create? I mean, Limerick. You stop that. Stab City. Charlie. That's what they call it. I don't want you coming out with that racist talk in front of Ava. I won't say a word. Anyway, she's not from the city. She's from Kilfinnan. So you just remember, she's a quiet country girl. Right. Poor thing, I'll probably be homesick. Ah, uh, we must be mad. Ah, uh, would you stop moaning and Charlie Kelly? She'd be like a breath of fresh air. The hell? Hiya. Oh, that's really good. Thanks. I'm not too worried. No, no, you just come right on in. Of course you won't mind if I walk into your bedroom at half eight tomorrow morning, will you? I am trying to run a business here, Paul. Well, perhaps I should come back later. No, no, Nicola's right. I was mistaken this place for my home. Sorry about that. Can I get you a coffee? Thanks. Can't be easy for you. Oh, I'll survive. Right. And well, once the separation gets sorted. Yeah, if it ever gets sorted. I'm sorry. Paul has gone and got himself some Rottweiler solicitor, so everything is up in the air again. I see. Look, Nicola, I don't want to pressurise you, but when you do realise all this affects me. Yeah, I know. I mean, we need to formalise my position as soon as possible, otherwise... It... Well, you wouldn't back out. I might have to. Yeah, um... Look, just give me a little bit more time. Of course. But let's get this out of the way and uh, then we can both relax. Okay, I'll... I'll speak to my solicitor today. After all, we want the company to be able to run smoothly without you. What? Isn't that what you want? Time off after the baby's born? What made you think that? It's just... Well, Paul mentioned it before. Yeah, well, that was then. I'm not going to have time to be playing happy families. <laughs> Sure, we can arrange. Thanks, but it's not going to be necessary. Okay, work to do. There must be some mistake. Lapsed? It can't have lapsed. Look, will you check it again, please? Everything okay? Yeah, just checking the policy. Oh, probably looking for loopholes. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I'm here. I bet you took a letter. I don't follow you. Look, I'm telling you, he did pay it. Well, some mix-up with the last instalment. Mix-up? Oh, don't worry, I'll get on to the bank. The cheque must be cleared by now. Well, how long before we get the cash? I don't know. Look, maybe we should uh, cancel the holiday, huh? What? Or hang on to whatever cash we have. No way. But Natalie, I mean... Look, Hughie, it's bad enough that some little scumbag comes along and burns out my car, but I'm down to he's going to do me on my holiday as well. Yeah, well, I only meant... Look, that we could just... Leo's promised to throw a few fares my way. We'll be all right. 
As long as the insurance cops up. Well, why wouldn't they? Well, they're quick enough to take your money, but they don't like handing it out. They're not the bad guys, Huey. Yeah, you well, know, just make sure you sort it out quickly. Don't give them any excuses. Coming! <laughs> oh, hi, come in. I was hoping I'd catch you. Yeah? The folks are in town. They'd love to meet you. Great, when? I thought we could have lunch. Oh, I can't. I'm working in the bistro. Oh, that's okay. I had a word with your boss. What? I had you rescheduled. I booked a table for one o'clock. Is that okay, cousin? Can... No, no, it's fine, really. Oh, you're around bright and breezy. Just inviting Lorraine to lunch with my parents. Oh, very nice. Um, can I get you coffee? Uh, no, thanks. I've uh, an appointment. Oh? I was going to tell you later. I've been invited to join this voluntary team of doctors on a clinic trip to Africa. Africa? And I'm meeting the other volunteers this morning. How long are you going for? Just five days. Sounds very exciting. Yeah, well, you can't pay for that kind of experience. <laughs> anyway, I better not keep them waiting. I must go. See you at one sharp in the yeah. bistro. Sorry. There's a young man that's going places. Yeah. Did you find anything in the papers? No. The only thing going is for apprentices. Maybe you should have taken up that lease on the salon, Mum. Yeah, maybe I should, but it's too late now. Would you think of calling into some places? Mm, I might. So? You're meeting Jack's parents. They just happen to be in Dublin, Mum. It's no big deal. No need to take me head off. I'm sorry, it's just... What? Everything seems to be happening so fast. He's mad about you. Jimmy was mad about me, Mum. I'm just a bit freaked, that's all. Look, if you don't want to meet his parents, just phone him and tell him. Oh, I couldn't. Of course you could. He doesn't own you. Oh, maybe you're right. I'm just making a big deal out of nothing. I didn't say that. Yeah, but I am. It's just lunch. I'm lying there in me jocks, and she walks Mara straight in. Look, you know if you're stuck, you can stay with me. Yeah, I know, but according to Annette, I have to stay put to protect me, right? And there's no chance of Nicola coming around. What do you think? Anyway, Annette's been uh, helpful, and she's been great. You know, I really have to thank you for putting me in touch with her. To be honest with you, if it wasn't for her... Oh, she's a good solicitor, all right. No, I don't just mean like that, you know what I mean? She's, well, she's been great personally as well, you know? Yeah? Yeah. Anyway, look, um, is it all right if I use a shower on your gaff? Oh, yeah, sure. Just don't, don't use all that water. <laughs> what did they say? Joyriders. And that's it? That's it. This town has gone to the dogs. All kinds of stuff happening, and no one seems to give a damn. And I think what happened to our poor Tony. Yeah. I mean, where's the bastard that murdered him, huh? Walking around out there scot-free, like the gouges that burned out your car, like half the bloody criminals in Dublin. Seems that way, huh? Uh, well, at least you'll get the insurance. That's something, anyway. Yeah. You're sure Nicholas left the flat? Of course I'm sure. Where in the name of God could she stay after? Sorry, pet. I better check on Rachel. Yeah. No, oh, Nicola. Hi, hey, Hannah. Here you go. Uh, is that the lot? Yeah. Right. So, you're not up on your mayoral duties this morning? No, no, not today. <laughs> there, thanks. See you. Bye. Are you really the mayor? Only a Carrick stone. <laughs> I think that's brilliant, the woman mayor. Cool. Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. My fault. Uh, go ahead. Jimmy, a very man. Listen, would you keep an eye on the shop? It's a matter of a word with Ellen. Oh, Gran, I'm up to me eyeballs. I forgot. That's all right. Uh, go on, you can go ahead. Listen, will you remind Helen she's to meet me in the bistro for lunch? Yeah, I will, I will. Go on. Okay, bye. Hey, Jimmy. See you. Helen, Paul Brennan wants to see you. Helen, come in. Right. And while you're at it, will you ever explain what Nicola's doing back in Carrick's town? Grant told me about you and Nicola. Why did you tell her? Thought you'd forgive me. Stupid, I know. Yeah, I can't blame her. No. Are you? Hi. Helen, we better get a move on. We have to meet the priest in half an hour. Wedding arrangements. All right, yeah. Will you get Rachel? I'll be ready in a minute. Right. Has Nicola told anyone? Don't think so. You don't think so? I need to know, Paul. Then you ask her. Don't be stupid. I am not being stupid. As far as Nicola is concerned, I'm dead, and you don't talk to a dead person. So you think I'm going to go over to her mother's looking for her? Her mother's? Well, isn't that where she is? No, she's, um... She's moved back in with me. I should never have let myself be talked into it. Rogers, 
Be smarmily. Listen, it'll do you good. Have a bit of fun around the place. Fun? Yeah. Some homesick young one crying for our mammy or our boyfriend or God knows what. Oh, it'll be a part of the laughs. Excuse me, miss. If you're looking for public seating, there's a park around the corner there. Ah, you're grand. I was just trying out the seat. And, uh, what do you think? Not bad. It's pricey, though. Is that so? I suppose you're an antiques expert, are you? I used to work in a market. There was always our lads selling off old stuff like this. Not like this. Yeah, only cheaper. Is that so? Look, that is a Victorian chair you're sitting on. You better get off it, so. Look, I don't mind you having a look around, but I'm trying to run a business here. I'm sorry. It's just, I was told this was Charlie Kelly's place. So? Are you Charlie Kelly? Who wants to know? Me, Ava. I'm telling you, I paid it in person. That's not what the insurance company is saying. They just don't want to pay out. They told me they sent you a warning. Yeah, they did. That's why I went into them with the money. You paid them? Yeah. Well, then why did they send you a registered letter cancelling the policy? Look, let me get on to them. I'll sort something out. Sort what out, Robbie? Either we're insured or we're not. Robbie? Oh, God. You didn't pay it, did you? I'm sorry. Sorry? What good is sorry to me? What's going on? He never made the payment. The car isn't insured. What? Look, I'll make it up, Chad. Come Take it easy. How could you do that? You're supposed to be our friend. You saw the way she was breaking our backs when I make a living. I didn't Listen, think... that car was the only hope me and Natalie had. You didn't think because you don't give a toss about anyone but yourself. You're a waster, Robbie. I knew the first time I saw you and I'd just get out of here before I... Just get out of here. Gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning sir. sir. Sorry I made trouble parking. Okay, let's get down to business. New kitten soft with dimples. Any thoughts on this? Well, it's the softest ever. Absolutely. Oh. Very soft. All down to its new dimply texture. It's Irish made and really long. So strong you can pull on it. Steady, Brian. <laughs> so, it's the big Irish softy with dimples. Let's go for it. New softer kitten soft. The big Irish softy with dimples. <laughs> Unlike heavy snacks, Danone Fruit Garden has been lightly whipped 1,000 times, so it seems about 1,000 times lighter. Delicate fromage fray and real fruit. Danone Fruit Garden, the lighter side of snacking. Bird's eye crispy chicken. Made with succulent white breast in a light crispy coating. Bird's eye chicken. Worth making a song and dance about. Why not try new spicy Mexican chicken? to talk to you about. Um, Mike wants to ask you to be an usher. Yeah? Now, I don't want you to feel you have to say yes. Oh? Well, after what happened with Lorraine, 
You know, I don't want you to really have to get into the whole wedding uh, thing. No, no, it'd be great. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. Hi. You're here? Bryce, I'm me at the table. Mom, Dad, this is Lorraine. Pleased to meet you. Thanks. Jack has told us so much about you. Oh, nothing bad, I hope. I'm sure that wouldn't be possible. Thank you. She didn't waste much time. She's a free agent. Yeah, looks like a bit of a drift to me. He's a doctor. <laughs> Big deal. Listen, do you want to come out for a drink with me and Dad tonight? No, no, it's okay. Look, I know it's been really hard on the lady. I'm fine, Helen. And nothing can be done. We're not insured to end the story. You know, when we went looking for the compo for Natalie's accident, my ma said we'd have no luck with that kind of money. That's superstition. What do you want? I'm really sorry, Huey. I had the money, I just forgot. So? So I'm sorry. Oh, that's great, Robbie. That makes all the difference. Listen, I'm screwed too. I had to take out a loan to pay for my half of the car. And what are you looking for, sympathy? I'm just saying... Do you hear this fella, Barry, huh? He screws up, he loses Natalie on livelihood, and he's looking for sympathy. Take it easy. Do you know what you are? You're a jinx. Ever since you turned up, he'd have nothing but trouble. You better watch what you're saying. Oh, you'll do what? Just watch it. Is everything all right, you? Yeah, everything's great, Charlie. Charlie, she never arrived. Ah, will you relax? Like, uh, she, she wasn't on the first train, so I waited for the next one. She wasn't on that one either. I don't know how I could have missed her. Yeah, well, she decided to take the bus. Yeah, save herself a few, Bob. How do you know? Because she told me. <laughs> Come here. Mags, meet Ava. From the country. Jack tells us you'll be going to college. Well, um... What subject do you plan to study? I haven't really decided yet. Oh? Oh, don't mind these men. Look at me, I haven't a degree, and it hasn't done me any harm. Who needs a degree to be a good wife and mother? Well, darling, if they were handing them out, you'd get an honours. Flatterer. <laughs> no, all I'm saying is that nowadays, young girls assume they have to have a career. What do you think, Lorraine? Well, I don't... Mom, times have changed. I wouldn't want a wife who didn't have a career of her own. Why, in heaven's name, not? Well, because I'd expect my wife would have as high an ambition for herself as I have. I hope you're listening to this. <laughs> oh, Claire, we'd better go. i just go and powder my nose first. Your mother's favorite phrase? <laughs> Dad always says that Mum will live forever because when the good Lord calls, she'll just say, sorry, I have to powder my nose first. <laughs> Do you know, Lorraine, how you could add 10 years to a woman's life to remove all the mirrors from the lady's rooms? <laughs> well, I get this. Well, how did I do? Oh, a definite hit. They're very proud of you. It's just that Dad has always had very high standards. They can be hard to live up to at times. Well, lovely to meet you. Same here. We must have you both down to the house soon, perhaps for a weekend. Great. If you're not careful, Claire will rope you into her bridge club. Do you play bridge? I thought you'd be gone. I'm just trying to sort out a scheduling problem for tomorrow. Yeah, well, I have a scheduling problem too, like uh, when is this an office and when it's my space. Do you want to do this on the phone later? No, no, we'll do it now. And if Paul hadn't messed around this particular client in the first place, we wouldn't have this problem. What are you talking about? Adrian Murphy. Do you remember him? Probably not. God knows you were too drunk to remember to keep any of the appointments that you made with him. I remember him. I'll take the meeting tomorrow. I don't think that would be a good idea. Well, I'm still part of this company. Yeah, well, then don't wreck it. I don't want to be frozen out. Paul, Paul, this is no way to conduct a business. Look, why don't you just agree a settlement in a civilized manner. Hmm? And why don't you just go screw yourself? You know, I can't imagine this is doing Nicola or the baby any good. Don't you lecture me? Paul, please. I'm really sorry about that. Oh, all part of the cut and thrust. Look, why don't we finish for the day? No, no, I'm fine. Well, look, why don't we meet up for a drink later? Yeah, okay. What, McCoy's? I thought we might try somewhere further afield. Well, what's wrong with McCoy's? Nothing, nothing. It's just, well, I don't know if you're aware, but Helen Doyle's home. 
I thought you might care to avoid. And why should I? I think if anyone should be doing the avoiding, it's her. I'll see you in McCoy's. The neck of him coming into the pub, huh? Yeah. And then he has the cheek to make out that he's the one we should feel sorry for. What? Ah. He started going on about the way he still has to pay back the loan he took out. I mean, I knew he was trouble from the start. I warned you about him. Are you saying this is my fault? The bloke has trouble written all over him. That's crap. Why are you defending him? I'm not defending him. I mean, what is it with you, huh? The man is a criminal. He's done nothing but mess you around from day one. And you're still defending him. I mean, what's going on? What are you saying? I asked you if there's something going on. God's sake, Huey, would you ever grow up? You didn't answer my question. What, yeah? Something is going on. The same crap that's been going on for years. I'm trying to get us somewhere, and you're getting in my way. Oh, yeah. You really get most places with a burnt out car, yeah? I suppose that's my fault, too. I asked someone to burn her out. I knew it was a mistake wasting our money on that car. Our money? Remember how we got that money, Huey? Yeah, of course we do. No, I don't think you do. We got that money because I was knocked down Russian, so I wouldn't be late for some two-bit job. Some life, isn't it? The only chance someone like me had to get a bit of money is to get hit by a shagging car. And now the money's gone. All you can do, all you can ever do is be another burden around me neck. Oh, is that all I am to you, yeah? A burden? I need someone who's going to pull with me, Huey. I'm worn out trying to drag this family onto its Look, feet. I've pulled with you far too often, and look where it's got us. Well, at least I try. Oh, and I don't. I've taken every crappy job that's come my way, same as you. You're the one who should be pulling with me. I, I, you pretend my opinion counts, but if I don't agree, you just go ahead anyway. Yeah, well, that's because it was left up to you. We'd still be living with your man. If it was years. left up to me, we'd have a deposit on a house. You know. Forget it, Natalie. I am not listening to you anymore. Will you bring them over to us, Kate? Yeah, sure, no Thanks. problem. Would you like to go somewhere else? No. I'm fine. So what's his mother like? Nice. And his father? Nice too. Oh, for God's sake, Lorraine, will you tell us more than that? Well, he's my place, Bridge, and his dad plays golf. Bridge? What does she look like? Don't like. Nice. I'd say they're loaded. Ma'am. What? Oh, Jack, um, let me get you a drink. Uh, just a mineral water, thanks. So, how did your meeting go? It was very interesting. Oh? They're looking for somebody to do it in on the expedition. Oh, yeah? Would you be interested? Me? You'd only be helping out. I don't know. Can I think about it? Sure. As long as the answer is yes. You don't need makeup, love. Just for interviews. For the model agency. I want to look dead professional. I thought it was a course. It's not starting till September, so I'm trying some agencies first. I did a modeling course once. Did you? Mm. Well, more of a deportment thing, really. He had us walking up and down the stairs, balancing books on our heads. <laughs> <laughs> That's mad. Hey, Marge, show her that thing they taught you. Huh? You know, how to get out of a limo without showing off your drawers. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, you sort of uh, weld your knees together like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'll do your makeup for you, no problem. Um, what are you going to wear? Wait till you see. I got it in Dublin. With the money I saved on my train fare. Oh, what do you think? Oh, Mother of God. Where's the rest of it? Do you not like it? Do you not think it's a bit... A bit exposed? Ah, no. It looks really cool. I'll put it on if you like. Ah, no, no. I'll take your word for it. Hmm. Listen, do you mind if I give my mum a call? She was a bit freaked out about me coming up to Dublin. Can't imagine why. <laughs> sure enough. Go on, go ahead. Oh, Charlie. Cheer up, Mags. At least she isn't homesick. <laughs> Tell him was telling me the priest was giving you a bit of stick. Just doing his job, I suppose. Ah, my foot. <laughs> Tell him you'll get the Protestants to marry you. <laughs> well, see any material? What? For the bridesmaids' dresses. Oh, no, no, we hadn't enough time. Oh. Do you want to go home? No, I'm fine. Same again? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you all right? <sighs> no. I'm sorry, I thought I'd be... Would you mind taking me home, please? Of course. <clears throat> to Paul, now tell her. Helen! This is between the two. Nicola? 
you want me to take care of this? No, it's okay. I'll wait in the car. Nicola, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I'm sorry. You're sorry for what, Helen? Are you sorry for sleeping with my husband? Or are you sorry for having a child? I'm sorry that you and Paul have split. But why? Isn't that what you've always wanted? I never asked Paul to leave you. Well, then why did you sleep with him? He followed me. All right, and forced himself on you. No, you don't understand. No, I'm sorry, I... Helen. I understand perfectly. Even before I married Paul, you were always there, you know, sniffing around him. So don't try to put all the blame on Paul, because he only gave you what you wanted. No, let's just stop. First, you know who I feel really sorry for in all of this? Is Mike. Oh, no, leave Mike out of this. Maybe someone should tell him the kind of woman that you really are. The kind who only wants what she can't get. Well, that's a lie. Yeah, well, then why aren't you with Paul now? You've got what you wanted, Helen. You've broken up my marriage. I didn't break up your marriage. You know something? You need to take a good, long, hard look at yourself, Helen. And see yourself for what you really are. Nothing but a cheap, adulterous little bitch. Well, no one forced Paul to sleep with me either. Do you think I don't know that? And Fair City is on RTE1 every Tuesday evening throughout the summer.